oh, the years I rode my bike and I used to fall quite a bit and I'd go in there. But the local hospital, I went in, you know, emergencies or when I got drunk and passed out, um, I used that because you know, they told me to go there or they took me. But the uh, hospital, I don't like going there because you have to wait too long. Well, I had to come to the emergency room a lot because I had problems with bleeding and stuff. And um, what happened was that nobody would help me because I didn't have medical, no nothing. The hospital people, the emergency room people, whenever I would come up, they would even turn and say, oh, go, not her again. So that really got to me. I was going to the emergency room at least every two to four months for my back or an ailment or whatever happened. I had a miscarriage, so I went for that too once, so just certain things. But quite often through the year, they knew me there. I don't know how they found out exactly, but they found out I had a number of visits. And Dolores came to see me and said, we saw that you had many visits and we have a project that can maybe help you get some regular assistance through this, not going to the emergency room all the time. Hi, Jody, I'm Holly B. The frequent user population is a very unique population. They are people who, because of a number of factors that have come together in their lives, find themselves going to the emergency department. It's their only place of care. Their health problems and their life problems are very complex and interwoven. And that could be some combination of a pain issue, alcohol or drug use, a mental health disorder some kind of chronic medical condition that's not being adequately treated. Most of these people are the poorest in our communities. About half of the people that we have worked with are either homeless at the time where they're enrolled in the project or the housing issue rears its head even after we're enrolling them. That's really the profile. This kind of use is very costly for all of our systems because it's not a smart way to spend money. An emergency department is not prepared to help somebody with a substance abuse issue, with homelessness, even with a chronic medical condition. That feeds the system of the individual having to go back for care because they don't get their care needs resolved. So what we have to do is reintegrate the systems for this population. What I always tell people is that you have to be part dog and part detective to work here sometimes. We get the referral from the hospitals and usually they come with some type of address and a phone number which usually is disconnected. If someone is homeless and we're looking for them, I try to find out what part of the county do they hang out. Like Jody, for instance. In the beginning we kind of had to chase her. And I think when she started to really see that at Project Connect, we were paying really close attention to her depression, to her back pain. That made a difference for her, that we were listening to her. We weren't saying, oh, you just, you know, want some more dope, you just want some more meds. Well, I'm an addict. Before I came here, I was homeless. I lived in my little Ford Tempo. I didn't care back then. I was depressed. I have sciatic nerve problems. I have problems with walking, bending. Going to the emergency room tended to be humiliating for me. A lot of the times they would put me back because they knew I was homeless. They didn't know if there was really a reason why I was there, was it just to get off the streets for that day. I knew about SSI, but I never thought I could actually fulfill the need of getting it. The people at Project Connect set me up with a physician that I get along great with. So it's all basically a big circle of all these people working together that has helped me out. I, I take the sleeping bag right here, and I have my backpack, and uh, I take the sleeping bag, roll it out, climb in there, and have my little radio, and uh, my medications and, and stuff, and that was, that was about it, in my, my backpack. Thomas was originally referred to me from Dominican's emergency room as a frequent user. Normally, Thomas was on the street. Many times he was so inebriated, he couldn't stand up. He might go to the emergency room for the fact that he had been vomiting blood or he was just passing out. Many times he would be dehydrated, many times he would be anemic, and many times that anemia was from the fact that he had gastric ulcers and was bleeding. 
as we established our relationship, I would see him maybe three times a week. And he went into rehab, a sober living environment, for 30 days. And it was at that point that he came out with the idea that he wanted to get his own housing. He started collecting things for his house. And these pans, this is my score. It was a Mexican restaurant going out of, out of business. So it was during that time that he was also at Cabrillo College and going to school and doing computer classes and music classes. The connection with Project Connect has been extremely important for Thomas in that he has support that he didn't have before. He hasn't returned to alcohol use. He's been taking his meds as directed. That's holding him really stable. And your therapy, how did that go yesterday? Good. Good. I met Project Connect when Dolores walked into my door at my house. Actually, I thought it was, you know, a person asking for the money that I owe the hospital. She's like, no, we are a new project out in town, and we were wondering, why were you in the hospital so much? Mara is a young Latina woman that is a frequent user for dysfunctional uterine bleeding. She also has a problem with morbid obesity, so it was difficult for the staff to deal with her in the beds and to turn her and to be able to care for her. And she didn't like going there. As we started to see Mara more frequently, it became very clear that she had multi-system problems. We're trying to keep her active. She was using the emergency room very frequently. My guess is that if not once a month for a while, it was a cluster of visits in a month. Since working with Project Connect, I think she's decreased her visits certainly by 80%. I think both emergency rooms in the county have seen a dramatic decline in the frequency of visits for this very well-known small group of patients. There are benefits from that, which include better ongoing care for the patient themselves, as well as more cost-effective care. And I think patient satisfaction of the patients that are here is far higher than if the emergency room is crowded and overwhelmed. Before Project Connect, our only options were referring patients to the county clinics. And so it's frustrating for us when we referred people there, they either didn't go there because it was too much of a hassle, or they were not eligible. So we would see these patients bounce back to the emergency room on a very frequent basis. When we take our results to public officials and we show them what kind of results we're having, people are very enthusiastic and very positive all over the country. There has been a lot of interest. I get calls every single month, people asking, can you talk about your project, how it got started? What have you learned? What would you share with another project that's trying to do this? Is it realistic to think that people can make permanent changes in their life? Absolutely. And we've seen that. I'll be honest with you people, this thing has saved my life, not just having a house. I'm starting to get myself back. I would do anything in my power right now not to lose what I have and what I've gained because I've worked so hard to get it. Today it's like I have goals. I'd like to go back to school and getting this depression contained. I think something like that could be possible. So yeah, there is definitely a future coming up now.